Hi, and welcome back for another Dr. T's pop-up clinic. I recently had the pleasure of visiting Trace Brewing at 4312 Main Street in the Bloomfield neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, and was very pleasantly surprised. My first surprise was just looking them up online and seeing that they're open seven days a week at 8 a.m., which made me wonder until I saw the reader board out front, which says open at 8 a.m. for coffee, beer after that. <laughs> I didn't get there at 8 a.m. I'm not a morning person. But I did get there on a Tuesday early afternoon, and it was an awesome experience. It's located inside a former uh, 1900s era foundry, a brass and copper foundry, I believe. So it's a really interesting space that they have kind of divvied up into a, a number of uh, cozy seating areas. They even have a wood stove. Even early afternoon on a Tuesday, it had very much a coffee house type of feel. There was a lot of patrons there, single individuals or couples working on computers, and it was a very subdued vibe. Now the place does get pretty busy and loud on weekends and, and during hours where you would actually expect a lot of beer drinkers, but there was a fair number of beer drinkers there when I was there. And the beers, as you will see, were very good. Another interesting aspect of Trace is that they have a vocational program that they run every year. It's uh, essentially a six-month paid internship. They hire one or two people to that position to gain experience in all aspects of the brewing process. The only requirement is 21 and over. They do not require entrance to have a college degree or even a high school diploma. So I think that's a pretty neat thing. But let's check out the beers. Hi folks, on location here, Trace Brewing in Pittsburgh, having a lovely Dortmunder type of lager, German lager. It's kind of like a bulked up Hellas little little maltier, little hoppier than a traditional Hellas, uh, but not as hoppy or bold as a German Pilsner. This particular beer, I'm drinking very nice. You get very light uh, bread and earthy hop aromas. The body is very nice. Medium, medium light bodied, in keeping with the style. On the palate, the hops are just a little bit more forward than the malts. You do get a nice fresh bread malt backbone with a very traditional continental German hop experience of a earthy, herbal, flavor notes. You get just a little tiny bit of a graininess on the back end. And now we're back with a Fodor aged Keller beer. Keller beers are more of a serving style than they are a true beer style. Uh, historically they were made with Marzins and Keller beer translated roughly means cellar beer. It means Typically a beer in a German beer hall that was served directly from voters in the cellar. Over the years, Keller beers commercially became much more predominant with Helles style base beers and some Pilsner style base beers than the old historical Marzen beer. Uh, as you can see, there's a fair amount of haze. Keller beers are unfiltered so they won't be a crystal clear beer. This particular one is aged additionally for a couple months in oak foders, which impart some of the oak notes, usually in the vanilla slash caramel slash uh, baking spice arena. 
This particular beer is very light in aroma and flavor, but pronounced. I get a lot of citrus on the nose, a lot of lemon. With a nice bit of malt backbone, light malt backbone, grainy, bready malt backbone. On the palate, you do get a little bit of the oak coming through. Uh, you do get uh, a nice amount of lemony hop character. But you also experience a bit of slight vanilla and a little bit of a tannic oak impact on the finish. The finish is pretty dry. All in all, very good beer. Last up on the list here, Trace, is a wild fermented sour ale aged on cherries called Ephemeral Gems. Now, if you watch the channel long, you know what wild fermentation means. It means a beer that has been open fermented, fermented open to the atmosphere, not in a sealed vessel. And that allows any bacteria in the air to inoculate the wort and influence the fermentation process. If you watch that beer short uh, on um, the process, you know that yeasts are essentially a bacteria. And while brewers produce wort, it's the yeast that makes beer. Yeast, different strains of yeast, different strains of bacteria can impart different aspects, different flavors, different fermentation characteristics to the final product. And open fermentation very often invites uh, a particular beastie called Brettanomyces, which not only sours the beer, which in this case is by design, uh, it also imparts a funky note that is often described as barnyard or horse blanket in nature, which doesn't sound particularly good, but it actually is. I always draw the parallel to blue cheese. Uh, if you have tried blue cheese and ended up liking it, you know that it can be an acquired taste and has a certain funk to it. And while Britannomyces doesn't taste like blue cheese, it does have the, a similar funky characteristic to it. But this particular beer is gorgeously clear, light pink, drinks very dry, almost drinks like wine. You get a very firm, sour presence, not mouth puckering, it doesn't hit you back here or anything like that, but definitely leads with sourness you get a tart cherry flavor very light on the tongue and the finish is semi-dry off dry and a little funky lingering funk into that finish that pretendomyces funk i was talking about lingers into the finish all in all fantastic beer thanks for watching and remember, if you like what I'm doing, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because I'm putting out new content all the time. I wouldn't want you to miss any of it. Catch you next time.